Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time zone you're in, whatever time you're watching this. This is the Wix Online meeting number 20. We're in March. I don't even know how that happened. It feels like every time I talk about this, we are in another month or whatever. Um, let's get into it. If you look at the agenda for today, it looks very similar to the agenda two weeks ago. We were out last week because I was gone. Uh, we'll do a triage. We'll talk about moving to GitHub. We'll review pull requests. We'll go over any questions or comments. So if you have questions or comments, toss them in the uh, discussion area over there. Uh, quick reminder, uh, these are recorded, so people that weren't able to be here now can watch them later. Last week, we had a really exciting thing, like a two-hour meeting, where we ended up talking about all kinds of exciting stuff. But I don't know if we're going to do that right now. So let's move ahead to triage, right? Got 10 issues. Uh, 10 issues. That's what happens when we skip a week, right? Yep. Um, all right. So 4243 is still on triage, but I know what I'm going to do with this. I was thinking about this. I'm going to write a whip about this issue. Um, okay. And I will put it out there and then have people discuss on it. Because, you know, that's the way we should have done it. Instead of me talking about writing a blog entry, it really should be a whip. And that's where it should be. So let's do that. Oh, it just disappeared. Literally, my mouse cursor just disappeared. That's uncool. So it was like, oh, oh well, whatever. Um, heat crashes during harvesting several DLLs. Compiled with Visual Studio 2008. Null reference. The problem is located here. Split. Oh, the reg key is null. Yeah, That's, I didn't look too deeply into that, but if there should be a registry value and there isn't, and that's what you would get, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, seems reasonable. Um, should we just go try to fix this in 3.9? If it really is that simple. Yeah, I'll take a look at it. All right. Going backwards. Shift tab is not as easy to type as tab. All right. App config gets reference app config not as out name. Currently VSTO building plugin. Oh, I'm building a VSTO plugin. I added this votive seems to note <laughs> as a new entry. Yes. Upon compilation, there's no app config in the output directory. Rename that. Oh, this is project harvesting. Oh. Okay. Um so project harvesting is busted. It wouldn't surprise me. There's all kinds of goofy things people do to their config files in their build process to rename them. So, um, yeah, okay. I guess project harvesting has to get fixed. Chalk it up to all the other bugs in project harvesting, right? Right. Uh, so, yeah. Fine. More reasons why we turn that thing off. Tons and tons and tons of bugs. Visual Studio 2012 becomes corrupt after installing Wix 3.8. What? Yeah. I've been going back and forth on this one oh. with the uh, reporter. Um, and this morning we got an activity log. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know that. I don't know anything. Um, I'll take a look at the activity log. I do not get the problem on another computer. Huh. Lovely. So there's something interesting about this computer. Right. Could it be some weird plug-in interaction badness that we have? That's why I asked for the activity log. I see. Okay. It's, well, uh, you know more about it than I do, which I know is not saying a whole lot. No offense intended. Uh, to, to either of us. <clears throat> <laughs> so, yeah, that. Um... Yeah, lovely. So, 3x until we nail this thing down? Three yeah, I'll take a look at the log. I mean, truthfully, if I don't get anything out of the log, I don't know what the next steps are. I don't so think we put there it are in 3x and we're like, dude, hook a debug up your Visual Studio and try to figure out why it crashes, because I've never seen this repro. Not that I use 2012 much anymore. Right, right. I kind of went straight from 2010 to 2012, I think, or 2013. I don't know if I ever really sat on 2012. Um, but yeah right and that's what's going to happen in the end basically 
Oh, and once again, John being very useful says he uses 2012 a lot and he has no issues. So there's something interesting about this guy's configuration. I mean, it's probably Wix yeah. doing poorly with some other thing he has in there. Add reference dialog does not list VSTO add-in projects. Oh, cool. I guess that doesn't surprise me if they aren't normal projects that can't be found. Right, right. This is another, you know, Votive has to do special work to support projects and yeah. Right now, that would be C Sharp, VB, and C++. Cool. It should, it should do that. It should. Yeah. Yeah, we'll take it 3x. I assume it doesn't break anything. I am facing issue when trying to execute SQL scripts. Looks like user has no effect when executing SQL string action. Looks redundant and should be removed or properly documented. This user is ignored. SQL string user. Well, why do they think it's not? We have tons of people doing this. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss of... And John's typing something. Cause I know John uses <laughs> these things quite a bit. Oh, and Jacob showed up. Perfect. We can do pull requests then. Or rather, pull requests would be more interesting than feared. All right. This doesn't... This works for other people. Let's let's close this and say they should take it to Wix users until they've tracked down a real issue. There's, like, no logs or anything in here. Yeah, the only thing... I, I don't use the SQL stuff, so I'm, I'm uh, just kind of... Looking at, at what's here, I, I don't. Yeah, I, I'm not. According to what I see, he seems to be suggesting that it should be using the SA account and it's using the AS account. Like it's picking up the wrong thing. I'm not getting it. That's saying that the database user trumps the string user. That would be surprising. But I see. Well, maybe. Hey, John, you want to go take a look at it? <laughs> I mean, you probably could find this faster than... I don't even have one of these examples lying around right now. Um... Yeah, let's ask for logs for this, and we'll see. Okay. There's, you're right, there's more information in there than I gave it credit for. Extract icon resources from PE files. Oh, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff we should do around this. Yeah, I've had a lot of things I wish we did around icons. We're like, I wish we had a resource DLL that we'd automatically just insert icons and do smart things. This is a feature request. It's not anything. It is. Yes, it's a feature. Yeah, sure. We could take that. There's a lot of little features around the icon handling that I wish we did. Yeah. How can we do that in 3x? Probably could do it in 3x. Well, we couldn't do that one in 3x, because that would be weird. If you expected it to be the XE, I don't know why you would do that. Well, yeah, we'd, we'd have to do something additive. And truthfully, I think we'd want to do something additive anyway. Um, although mostly I'm thinking of ARP. ARP handling is is just you know kind of clunky, and we could smooth that over, you know, yeah. pretty nicely. Yeah. And we could probably we could do the same thing with, you know, icons and and whatnot yeah. in other. Well, and there's and there's advertised shortcuts that I was thinking too that have to be done in a special way and all this other kind of stuff. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of little stuff around icon stuff that I think we should do. That that would yeah. be another one of them that would be awesome if we did it. Art versus advertised show. I have no idea what Jacob is talking about. Art versus advertised show. S H O. I, I, someone made a made a a doggy reference, or I don't know, how do you say D O G E? Um, I don't know. Someone says it's on a Homestar Runner 
thing, and I kept listening, and I could not hear the thing. All I know is that all that stuff just makes me feel old. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was having a conversation with Sam Ranji on Twitter, and it was it was painful. Anyway, um, pre-build step with typo invalid variable crashes 2012, then makes it unloadable. Well, that sucks. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I suspect. Oh, the pre-build macros thingy. Yeah, I, I, there are cases that you can get Visual Studio into really bad statements. Yeah, I suspect the same thing would ha could happen with other project types, but yeah. Um, so yeah, we could toss it 3x. Sure. If someone wants to fix votive things. It's really, I really dislike that feature anyway, but whatever. Wix bootstrapper cancel button. In 3.7, all right. In the Wix bootstrapper window, cancel button while installation. Start to MSI, get started with its own data. So this is display internal UI. If you cancel the window in between, installation if doesn't proceed or roll back. It just hangs. If you kill the, uh, if you kill the BA, the MSI is off on its own and nothing gets pumped. Interesting. So it's a timing thing that if you cancel that and then you display that. So this is basically Wix standard BA has to would have to handle this better. Yeah, I think basically the BA needs to know that it's currently handed off to display internal UI and you know basically that should be modal if we're not making that modal we should be modal oh 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 the MSI UI should be the MSI modal. UI should be modal it can't be well, it can't it, well, be but, sorry. Yeah. yeah not not modal modal but we need to disable Right. Everything we can of the BA while the MSI UI is up. Okay. Basically, Wix standard BA doesn't make a fantastic display internal UI BA. <laughs> Which we knew. Which doesn't surprise me. All right, we can throw it in the bucket. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess we'd have to get handle that case more. So, honestly, it could just remove all the buttons entirely. It could just be invisible. <laughs> Actually, there's, there's a whole user experience, which Wix Standard BA does not do, that it probably should to handle display internal UI, and that's because it doesn't. So I guess that's what it comes down to. I think the suggestion here is to use a different BA. Uh, sure. One that supports display internal UI? Right. Okay. I mean, I mean really, right? Cause it's, yeah. Uh, all right, backing up. Do we want Wix standard BA to do to handle display internal UI? Uh, no, my vote was never to expose display internal UI, but right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Jacob's obviously with you. So, yeah. so I, I think the answer then is um, this, this is really weird. Jacob and Bob are like on a like <laughs> same wavelength or something. Um, so I think. We should say, I mean, if that's true, and we don't want Wix Standard BA to be the best scenario for this, like, would we take the fixes for it? Well, the answer is no. It's like, cool, then create your own BA that does the right thing in this case. I, 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 given that display internal UI exists, um, yes, we should support it. In Wix Standard BA? I say should, and that feels too strongly, too strong a word for it. Um, I would not object to supporting it better in, in Wix Standard BA. All right. So if someone came along and said, That's here awesome. are the fixes in 3.9 for handling display internal UI in the BA better, you'd be like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Then we should then we should not kill this bug. And we should basically say, yes, Wix Standard BA is not currently designed to handle internal UI. Um, it's a feature request and not a bug. <laughs> essentially yes. which I mean someone can argue eh, no it's a bug I want it to support this and we'd be like yeah but it doesn't so you know one man's bug another man's feature but there you go 
Yeah, I'm, I'm very clear on the difference. All right, well, there you go. I think that's the answer. Cool? Works for me. Sorry, I just gave you a paragraph to write. Yes, you did. <sighs> Failed to extract all files from container. Oh, that's not good. Is this signing? Uh, this, this is a rename. You know, we said someone else saying rename's not behaving correctly. That, I, I, I found the log very odd, which is why I asked for, you know, full, full logs. Um, because it's not clear to me why you would be looking for the original source. Well, I also asked for bundle offers. I'm like, this should be cached, right? Uh, the attached container will not be cached, though. Oh. Oh, is there any way to do that? What? If you have an attached container, cache everything, mm. including the attached container? Well, it will cache all the packages, but it will not cache the attached container. Um, okay. So, if it's... What, what, what's missing in this case that causes it to go looking for the attached container? Yeah. That we don't have. That, that's okay. not showing in this log. I mean, somewhere above this point, we will see in the plan something that will have an action state of cache. Right. That's missing. Okay, so in this case, this is just... Okay. Yeah, so something is needed. And it went asking for... Oh, original source is my installer underscore 1.0. Right. So that is a legitimate question why is looking for the attack container from the other name. Yes, and it now what's weird is that in this case it should have prompted for source. Like there should have been a source prompt. Or uh, there should have been a request for source. Um yeah. And I'm not seeing that in the log file here. Hmm. Uh, would that be shown if the... I don't remember if there's logging for the attempt, if the BA doesn't handle it. I don't remember either, off the top of my head. I haven't been in burn in a long time. Or rather, I've been yeah. deep into other things that have flushed burn to disks. So. Right. Um, probably they're missing the the handling of the prompt for source. Because Wix bundle original source is there, which is good. I mean, because that's how it asks for it. I mean, that, it should go look in that location for it. Yeah. If it can't find it, then it goes, well, I have to prompt for it. Please provide me the source of the original installer. And you have to go down and download it again or whatever you do. Oh, acquiring container from copy from temp installer my installer dot exe. All right, so it used the original name, not the original source. Yeah, there's probably a there must be a bug in here somewhere or something. I'm just trying to remember. I I, I don't remember anywhere that the output file name is part of a manifest or anything. It is for this case. Oh. Well, is it actually part of the manifest or just written to the to the ARP? No, it's in the manifest somewhere so that we can... For this case where we need to prompt for it. Um, and But it's supposed to use the original source if it can. I thought it was supposed to use original source if it has it. Right, right. Instead of the built-in name. It's like the built-in name is the fallback for the original source. Got it. But somewhere in here there should have been a prompt for source. Yes, Jacob, it should use the name that it was used on install, which is the original source, if it can. And then if there is no original source yet for some reason, um, like you haven't installed yet, then then it falls back to the bundle name if it can't find the original source property. 
our variable. So anyway, something's going wrong here. So okay. yeah, th this is a bug. Kind of weird. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm really surprised it's not prompting for source here. Setting string variable, last use source to that. That says that we tried. That's yeah, I don't know. I, 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 it, the, this is this is real simple to repo. Someone just have to go debug it. Something. Yeah. This blog does not behave the way I would expect it to, unless they did a prompt. I, yeah, I'm, something's not right here. So yeah. I, I, I would expect Wix bundle last used source to not be just a directory. Is that? A bad assumption on my part. Um, no, it's the directory because that's where all of the packages are found relative to. Uh, got it. Okay. So it's the source folder, but <laughs> yeah. I, you could argue that name could be better. But anyway, that's. I, I might. I might. Well, it's it's the it's the same name I think as the MSI called anyway. Anyway. Um, it should be using the original source, though, not the built-in name, if it has the original source. So I don't know why it's not. Anyway, yeah, just have to hook a debugger up to this thing and go drop into it. Cool. This could be taken in 3x for sure. I don't think it would break anybody's expected behavior. Hopefully. Uh, yeah, cool. Cool. Done with triage. Cool, cool, cool. All right, here we go. Onward with the rest of the meeting. Right, right? I didn't miss any bugs, did I? Nope. All right, cool. Moving to GitHub. We're moving very soon. I know I said it might be this week, but being gone most of all last week means that I did not move, that I did not get done. Plus, we had a couple pull requests come in, and I didn't see Jacob around much. Um, most because I was busy, so I didn't hunt him down. Um, so we need to talk about his pull request, which is the big thing. But he's here today. So we're going to do that. Um, and it'll either be next week. And honestly, depending on what we had this discussion with Jacob, it may be uh, tomorrow or this weekend, because I just saw that another one of our blocking issues has been resolved. So um, Repo per Wix toolset major version. This hasn't changed. This is still what we're going with. I haven't heard anybody saying anything anyway, any which direction. So that's all good. And then we'll open pull requests. And Jacob says he might be re willing to redo in GitHub, which means that we may be doing this super fast. I might actually be doing this tomorrow or today even. All right. So no new information here on the moving to GitHub other than we are doing it, and we are doing it soon, quickly, fast like almost now, if there's any questions about that. Uh, any other questions about that out there? Everybody's like, no, we've talked this to death. We know what we're doing. All right, we know what we're doing. Yes, yes, oh, it's all quiet. Quiet makes me nervous, I don't know. Yeah, see, John's got the hang of it. Bob's already going, oh, I'm not talking about this anymore. It's all right. done. It's done. All right. It's done Let's go talk about pull requests. Work. Let's go talk about pull requests then, because that's honestly where the work is remaining in all of this. So I have the pull request here. Oh, my mouse is back. Sweet. Um, I'm going to go down to the bottom. Um, this bug, I'll move over myself. This is this ancient bug. I just need to sit down and test it. Honestly, maybe I'll try to test this, and I'll try to test that rename bug all at the same time. We'll see. Um, this is Heath's patching bugs, and the only reason we're stuck on these is because of assignment agreements, and my email just dinged saying that his assignment agreement has been approved. Yep. So these two things will now disappear, which is all good. Um, Sean said he was fine to punt this, and he'll move it over to Git, um, GitHub himself, which is very nice of him. Um, get it all pulled over and squared and things like that. And it sounds like Jacob's willing to do the same thing um, and rebase and redo the work against GitHub. Um, so I'm inclined. There are 18 comments on this, Jacob. 
of various things, some of them more interesting than others. Um, like some, it's a pen reverse one. Well, you know, it's a big feature that we can all talk about. Like it's actually a block of features, so it's been a good thing to discuss. But like this particular issue here, where we're assigning SCZs, um, stack stuff is not going to work out well in the long term. Um, so I, that's like one of the things we should do. So it sounds like you're willing to take all this feedback, incorporate, it, and bring it again against GitHub. Is that true? All right. So rebase, fix it up, get the GitHub. You'll basically have to, yeah, copy all your files over. So yeah, where I can actually respond to comments with additional changes. So yes, all right. So it sounds like you'll be happier not using CodePlex to try to get this thing in, um, which is one of the things that we're going to be happy dealing with this. Um, these two things are missing assignment agreements, and this is a monster of a change. I don't even know where this came from. Um, oh, oh, I know who this is now. Oh, this makes so much more sense now. Right. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Okay, this is a ginormous feature Thing. I don't know how to think about this thing. Uh, we're probably going to have to let this sit out here on CodePlex until we figure out what we want to do with it. This is definitely going to have to move over later. Yeah, I, I'm not going to wait to move this over. This thing is crazy. And Stephen just sent this, and this change here is really small. Is. So I'm inclined to punt this and have it come back over at GitHub, which I know is a little more extra work for him, but I think it will probably work out just fine in the end. It's not like we're nuking, you know, the yeah, no, site, right. So. And and the pull request will be open, so we can still see the diff. And if he really, really screams, and I feel really, really bad about it, I suppose I could, you know, we could pull it over for him. But I, I honestly, probably toss some feedback here and call it good. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. So that will take care of everything. I'll move this myself. Keith will be in. This will be declined. This will be declined. This will be declined. This will be declined, and then we're clean, and I can move the GitHub, right? I think so. All right, I am going to pull that trigger. Maybe I'll do it today. We'll see how much time I have for tonight or something like that. So we're we're moving, we're moving. Um, back to pull requests. So on that note, pull requests are happening. They're going to be all taken care of and all that kind of stuff. I got a bunch of them last night that came in from I guess Mike GC out there. So oh, we're there. Um. Questions, comments, things people want to talk about while we're here. We got through all the bugs today. I need to go write a whip for that issue. Um, all that kind of good stuff. Actually, can we go back to the bugs real quick? Um, this bug here, this is 3.9, right? Oh, and it's assigned to me. All right. So I'm going to open a whip on this that says that we're going to remove the signature verification of payloads in a bundle because it's not adding security and it's adding complexity. And you might be missing that one tiny feature where you could technically change the payload but keep this, the signature the same. You'll be losing that. I'm going to write that whip up. Removing that, you're willing to take that in 3.9, Bob? So I should do that work in 3.9? Yeah, as long as... Well, okay, sorry. Go back. Um, the feature goes away entirely. Correct. The or, signature verification goes away entirely of so of it, payloads. You cannot opt in. Right. It goes away. Yes. Oh, Jacob's new to this discussion. I thought he was on these things before. <laughs> um. What we're talking about removing is a signature verification of payloads because there's a number of bugs that we found in it. Um, and instead, we're just going to use the hash verification of the bundle is the short rehashing of that long discussion. And it's not just close environment. It's, it's, they don't, they're not adding any value today. Um, the only feature you get is the ability to change the payload in very small ways um, that it can do it. 
Jacob saying burn can download arbitrary content from the web. Well, yeah, well, we don't download arbitrary content. We only download content that the bundle knows about, and it uses the hash verification instead. So what we're talking about removing here is the... Um, <laughs> but then you can't change the MSI in any way. So yes, Jake, ah, so Bob, someone actually has used, maybe used this feature. See, this is why I, you know, wanted the blog post, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a whip now. Um, right, right, right. And Jacob, you are correct. You cannot change the MSI in any way after we change this. Um, as long as it's signed, you know it's a trusted source. Yeah, except that um, you can also, and where this was coming up was that, you can get the wrong package downloaded, even though it is correct, the correct package, or sorry, it is a correctly signed package, and you will attempt to install and it won't work. So, and the install ends up being wrong in the end. Thus, you end up with um, <laughs> interesting behaviors, which were the bugs we were getting. Apparently, Bruce has hit another bug. <laughs> Uh, has hit a similar bug where this issue. So what happens is you get like old content or the, the wrong content that has the correct signature but is not the right payload in there with the right name. And then... yeah, yeah, basically you you, you could change, you could do the equivalent, I think, of a small update. But anything beyond that, you know, like where you're just oops, okay, we have a bug and we we update one DLL and that you know or a couple whatever, and that's it. But you can't do anything that you know approaches a minor upgrade, and certainly not a major upgrade, because all the metadata about the package that Burn has is going to be wrong, or some of the metadata that Burn has is going to be wrong. Well, you get other things like one of the cases that was brought up was if you do a layout of a pre-release build, and then you do right. a layout of the RTM build, but you end up with some of the pre-release bits in there in the same directory then you install, then you can get this weird mishmash of pre-release bits and RTM bits because they were all signed correctly. Yep. Burns like, oh, these look good and these look good. And so you end up with basically an indeterminate answer of what Burn actually installed. And so the fix to that is to actually hash the payloads with the signature that the bundle knows about. Well, then if you do that, then there's no point in verifying the... Uh, signature of the payloads because the hash is stronger or as strong or well stronger because it's stronger. exact right it's exact file and then everything just works out and so of course if you were trying to use this feature to sneak through tiny changes to your MSI or your calves and stuff like that that will not be possible now that you could have done in the past and so that is a loss but in the end you basically just ship higher version bundle and the right thing will work out. And you will always know that you get the right, pay the right payloads inside your bundle. And this is why I have to write a whip about all this. And other positive side effects is that people will be able to try, will be able to install on Windows XP or whatever other machines don't have current certificates because all they have to do is trust the bundle executable, which is a usually a manual visual, you know, you can click and get that all to work out. And then the payloads won't be blowing up because only Burn will verify them by their hash, which is all And to be clear, the, the things can still be signed. Yes. It's just that Burn won't check it. Burn will not be using the signature as the trust, the trust verification. Yep. Yeah. And so no. <sighs> Jacob's over here writing a book or something. Right. <laughs> Jacob's asking to keep the the other way around, just to opt in was, into the signature verification. And that was my question. As as a thing for three nine do we want to remove it entirely? All right. It's just, yeah, yeah, just all the side.
side effects and yeah I, I got to the same point Jacob the the idea that you could swap in a a new package is an interesting use case um, but it's one of those it's absolutely playing with uh, fire isn't hard enough Well, that's the thing, though. It's like an XE package. Uh, I don't know. Actually, Burn doesn't know a lot about XE packages. Yes, you could swap out a whole lot about an XE package as long as it detected. That's true. Yeah. Actually, no, I take that back. You could swap it out with, yeah, you could do a lot there. Burn, the manifest doesn't have a lot, so Burn itself just kind of treats them as black boxes. Yes. That is true. Which basically means, like, right now, if someone uses a .NET framework, they could swap out the .NET framework with a burn, in a burn bundle with any Microsoft signed executable. So you could get your burn to install the NetFX or whatever MSI thing that isn't NetFX instead of NetFX. Technically speaking, yeah. you could do that. And you took the same command line parameters. <laughs> and it took the same command line parameters as NetFX did. Or at least ignored them. Or, yeah, right. Or did whatever it does. So, I mean, that's a little, it's just a little kooky. I mean, yes, you could do that. It's just a little weird. Anyway. It's an interesting use case from original. I just don't think it works out as well. And I don't think the side effects are worth it at this point. I guess that's where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm okay I'm okay with the change going in because I don't think anyone can safely use it right now. So yes. I don't think anyone needs to say. Right. And so Jake's was asking if there's a performance difference between hashing and just in the verification. And there oh, is yeah. actually a large uh, a large difference. Uh, uh, there's a, a noticeable difference. Uh, hashing is faster than digital signature verification. It's awesomely faster, better. Yeah. Well, right now, if you, right now, we go through a code path that might download a CRL, correct? It, it will attempt to. If you're out of date, it'll attempt to, and if it doesn't, then it falls back and doesn't. But as as far as perf goes, there there could be, you know, a good chunk of time. That's true. That that first. Verification takes. Yes, that's correct. If if you hit the the worst case in that could be bad. Let me go to the internet. Wait, 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 wait. All right, timed out. Can't get that. All right, fine. Go and try to do the verification without going to the internet. Right. Which ends up being a whole lot of machinations, and in there somewhere it hashes the file. <laughs> so what we're going to do? We're just going to hash the file. Yeah. <laughs> and move on. And it's more robust because that API, digital signature API, is just brutal painful thing so so uh, that's where I ended up I'm, I'm okay with it it's a little it's a little hinky for a, for a point release to remove that that kind of functionality uh, well, well no, all right so tell you what all right based on this I'm gonna do the 3.9 and 3.9 I'm gonna flip the suppress whatever the suppress signature ver verification validation whatever it's called I'm going to flip that to the opposite of what it is today, so I guess it's not no. I'll flip it to yes by default. Okay. But otherwise, keep all the logic in the engine. Right. Okay. And then in 4.0, we can rip the code out and make it go faster. Well, I'm, well wait, make it go faster. Sorry, remove the search verification probably. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, do do the actual removal. That okay. I mean, I, again, I'm I'm fine with the change either way. Um, just because of we're 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 changing behavior and removing a feature. Um, normally, that would not be something we do in in a, a point release, but yeah. given given what it is, I think it's fine. Um, I'm also interested in seeing if, you know, how much, frankly, how much space we save. Is that 10K of code out of the engine? More? Yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting chunk of code. 
And yeah, and, I'm gonna, I'll pull all of the D utils so we won't get it anymore, and then yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Sure, sure. Well, and, and actually, that's the primary reason that I'm I'm okay with this change because it's an interesting piece of code where you define interesting as. It took us a long time to get it right. <laughs> oh, oh God! Oh God! We're all gonna die. Um, it's it was yeah. It was really hard to get right, and it's com complex, I think, and. And we force everyone through the code path. I'm like, uh, yeah, yuck. Yep, right. So Jacob brings up an example of what if it's the same payload that gets resigned, the hash will change. And that is true. If you resign the payloads, then the hash will change. However, um, you won't have to resign payloads anymore because they'll be hashed by the burn bundle, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and also, you already had to be careful when you were resigning that you had the same thumbprint in your certificate, which you might not, I think, get if you redo your signature, because then if you change the thumbprint, it doesn't it doesn't work. And I don't understand your use case with external cabs. I don't know why that would be different. Oh, you're going to change the MSI and resign. Oh, because you're going to resign the cabs and change your MSI to have new digital signatures for the cabs. Yeah, don't don't sign external cabs. <laughs> don't do this to yourself in MSI. Does MSI actually, actually check the signature of of a signed external cab? I think you can tell it to. Yeah, isn't that what the digital signature does? I just wasn't sure that it's actually used. I don't remember. Yeah. As far as I know, it does. Okay. We have that whole machinations. I mean, that's what ins that's what Insignia does is juggles all that signing of MSIs and or signing of cabs and then the MSI and then the MSI after that. I mean, it's a sim similar juggle that you, know, you have to do with burn with a attached bundle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Sign the cabs and the MSI. Right. Yes, I, I need to write down the optimal way through this because the best solution there is to not, if you're using a bundle, is to not um, sign the cabs in the MSI. <sighs> we need to go through and do that. And this is because the bundle is signed, which means the manifest is verifiable. Right. The manifest has the hashes. That's right. And then everything else is secured from that point down. Right. And the hashes are as strong as the signature that wraps the bundle. And you can get a lot of perf back doing all this. Right. The downside is um, if you have your, if you want to support installing MSIs outside of a bundle, they're now unsigned. Well, yes, if you want the cabs to be signed and verified by MSI, that's true. So I have a one gig install, and the only thing that changes is my five meg MSI. So rebuild your 5 meg MSI, then rebuild your bundle, <laughs> Jacob. So um, that's the thing. And if you have a 1 gig attached executable, then you're you're asking, you're playing with fire. Because <laughs> uh, that doesn't work out too well on Windows anyway. Jacob, you're talking about all online packages, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, a web installer. Yes, quote absolutely. Yeah, web installs and all that. And so what ends up happening is when you change one thing, you have to rebuild all the things above it, which means if you change the cab, then you have to rebuild the MSI to know about the cab, presumably. Maybe not, sometimes. Um, and then you have to let the bundle know. And so that's the chain as it goes up. Um, what, what, Jacob, what issue would you fix in an MSI that doesn't change content?
change a shortcut inside the MSI, but you don't change the version, the upgrade code, or anything like that. So you can't tell which version the MSI people have. Some of them have the fixed one, and some of them have the non-fixed one. And they all look the same. And burn can get either of them if it's doing digital signature verification. So you just have to change it and hope that eventually people get the right one in the end. No, you can't change the version of the MSI because the bundle needs to be updated to know the version of the MSI so it can detect it correctly on the machine. Right, that's what I was talking about before with the with the small update, which is literally you're you're making a change that does not require a change to the product version or the product code or anything else that Burn knows about. That's where an XE, because Burn doesn't know much about them, you know, they're basically black boxes, so you could change XE's MSIs burn harvests so much data out of them that it, it's that's that's what I'm talking about with the you know yeah you could do it but man I think there's like eight people in the world I, I want to try something like that all right let's not do that one here well there's a whip coming we'll use the whip to finish this off um, yeah that's fair and talk about it if I think that's the right time frame for this happening anyway um, so yeah, cool. Um, that's all I got. Anything else? That's all I got. All right, sweet. So we got through all our bugs today. Um, one of these days we probably need to do a review of three nine four zero and our timelines on those things. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I've actually thought about this and then forgot to mention it during our off week. Uh, I would like to go through bugs that are currently assigned to people, mm -hmm. um, and if people are are if so, someone has taken a bug, I'd like to kind of check out status. It felt really middle managery, but um, I couldn't come up with a better uh, idea. Uh, basically, just if you've taken a bug, are you still planning to do anything with it? You know. No rush, yep. but but then we get into the and oh yeah, we were talking about shipping soon, huh? Um, it is March if we're targeting you know summer. Uh, yep. Works at nine. It's time to start, yeah, you know, figuring out what uh, what's actually going to get done. Yep. If three nine is early summer and four zero is late summer, then yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's another thing we'll probably want to talk about is you know uh, ordering and. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't, don't stress people out too much. Yeah, makes sense to me. All right, we'll do that next week or something, or the week That's after. Good. Yeah. In the next couple of weeks, we'll sit and have that discussion. Otherwise, I'm going to return you guys back to your regularly you know, scheduled meetings and all that other kind of stuff you do at work, um, or otherwise not at work, whatever you might do for your day. And uh, hope you guys have a good time. It's good to be back, and we'll pick up here again next week, I think. We'll get back on our weekly schedule. Hopefully, life is getting back to normal here. Sounds All right. good. All right. Well, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye.